Hey Lifehouse, before we start, we want to give a quick shout out to anyone new to this thing called online church. And in case you are new, we want to give you three ways to fully maximize your online experience. Tip number one, don't watch alone. Share this video with your friends and your family on whatever platform you're watching from. You will never know who needs to hear this right now. Tip number two, get rid of any distractions, silence your devices, or put them on do not disturb. Take notes during the message, whatever you need to do to stay focused. Most importantly, stay with us till the very end. Tip number three, interact with us. Drop a comment or two and then join us after the service on Zoom for a quick and casual conversation about the sermon with some of the LifeHouse leaders. The hosts are gonna drop the link in the comments later on in the service. LifeHouse, we hope you already forgot to meet you right where you are today. So if you're ready for church like we are, join us when we say, let's, let's go. go! What's up, LifeHouse fam? Hey! I hope you're excited to give God some praise right now. Hey, can we put our hands together like this? Hey, hey. God, we love you. We praise you. We lift your name. We're excited to sing to you. Hey, can we sing when night has fallen? When night has fallen, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. Hey. Faith is lost and my hope exhausted. You will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. Hey, I've decided I'm not giving up. Cause you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. season you keep repeating promises to me now there's no stopping now there's no stopping what you have started until it is complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i've decided
this song, y'all. This may be one of my favorites. It just says he's never lost a battle. Not one. He's never lost a battle. I know this was like back to school week. Shout out to all the parents holding it down. You've become teacher and everything. You made it through the week. He's never lost a battle. So this is your time. Just any stress you may have felt, any anxiety throughout the week. I just want to invite you just to release it right now. Release it at his feet. We're in his presence. In his presence there is fullness of joy. In his presence there is peace. There is rest for our souls because we have the victory in him. He is my faithful. He is my faithful father calling me out of the dark. I could not whisper away what he said in the light. And he is my firm foundation my anchor won't be moved storms may collide but my soul is on fire with his word hey. so when listen to the sound of power on my lips jesus has broken the curse he has never lost a battle and who are you great mountain that you should not bow low jesus defeated the darkness he has never lost a battle
reminder to anybody our God remains undefeated why because he's a mighty God stronger than my struggles more faithful more good more kind than anything and anyone God we thank you that you are big enough to handle everything we throw your way in your capable hands and the power of your word we can trust in you is that all right if we continue to worship just wherever you're at just continue to worship just continue to worship Every gesture of your hand Waves of fear Collapse of your command I know tomorrow When the pressure rushes in You'll be there To rescue me again What a mighty God
You're so good to us, Jesus. A love that is so undeserving. And yet you call us your own. This is why we worship. This is why we worship because you are so incredible in your love for us. So God, we thank you that we get the opportunity to lift your name high. So wherever you're at right now, can you just lift the name of Jesus high? Can you just clap your hands? Can you shout? Can you do a little dance? Anything just to let them know that you love them. God, we love you, yeah. And listen, if this is your first, your second, your third time visiting, we just want to say welcome. We are so excited that you're tuning in, that you're joining us. Man, and if you love Starbucks, we want to make sure that you fill out the connection card, the digital connection card, so that we can just give you a Starbucks gift card just to say we're glad that you're here, we're glad that you're connected with us. As a matter of fact, Lifehouse fam, can we just make some noise for our guests? Just shout super loud for them so they can hear you through the screen. <laughs> and at this point, we just want to turn it over to Lacey and Edward as we continue our worship through giving. This is the part of our service where we want to give you the opportunity to continue to worship, form your heart, and fuel the vision of LifeHouse through your financial giving. If you are a guest today and LifeHouse is not the church you call home, please know there is no obligation or pressure to give today. This service is our gift to you. But what we are about to say together is something different and something we will start to incorporate each week to help us to prepare our minds and our hearts to give, along with helping us to think counterculturally about the money and the resources God entrusts us with. We are going to say this prayer together. The words will be on the screen. Holy Father, there is nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and am belong to you, bought with the blood of Jesus. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world that you cannot abide. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord who love him with free hearts and serve him with renewed minds, who withstand the culture's lie that the more or less I have, the happier I'll be, who put their trust in you as provider, believing that you own all things, have all power, and in you is no lack. You entrust me to steward all you've given me for the forwarding of your kingdom. Give me the grace and strength to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money that you may trust me with true riches. Above all, I am determined to be generous because Father, you are generous. It is the delight of your daughters and sons to share your traits and to show what you are like to all the world. Amen. To give today, simply text GIVE to the number on your screen or go to givetolifehouse.com. Cash and checks can be received at the giving box located in the foyer. Lifehouse, let's worship the Lord through our giving. And thank you for helping us bring life change through Christ to all people. Now, back to the service. Well, good morning, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us at Lifehouse Church Online. It's Pastor John here, and we are finishing up today our Scriptures for the Season series before we actually do that though, two things. Would you share this? Right now, just click the share, the share button. I believe there's somebody on your timeline that really needs to hear today's sermon. But secondly though, we, uh, we told you about this last Sunday, we, Lifehouse, is back at the Kiln Creek Regal Theater weekly on Sundays starting next Sunday, September 20th. We're having two services. 8.30 and 10.15, and we want you there, granted though safely and socially distant. So, 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 so we are simply re requesting that, that, if, that if you want to join us there, RSVP your spot to 757-690-2401 uh, by texting 
live. And we want you to come out and worship live with us. Bring your kids with us. Although we're not going to have our kids and our kids environments going on, your kids are welcome to come out and worship with you and hang with you. We're going to have children's activity packs available to you as you walk in that your kids can participate in during 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 the service time. And like I said, space is limited to ensure social distancing. So RSVP, your spot now, one more time, 757-690-2401. Lifehouse is back at Regal Kilden Creek Weekly, and we want you there, 8.30 and 10, 5, and 10, 15. All right? So look, today we're finishing up, like I said, our scriptures for the season series, and, and, and really the, the whole goal and concept with this series was to truly equip you with God's word to face this crazy season that we are all facing, right? We, we, we've got racial unrest and, and tension going on and uh, a global pandemic, economic downturn, and then to some of you right now, like myself, are trying to homeschool your children. God help us all. But at the same time, right, God will give us strength Today's scripture, though, uh, it, 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 it's actually three, three. It's actually three scriptures, and it's found in Matthew twenty-eight, twenty-eight, eighteen through twenty, and, and, and this is Jesus talking. This is Jesus right after he rose from the dead, and he appears to his disciples, and these are some of Jesus's final, fi- final. Uh, final words to, to his disciples before he ascended to be with his father. And Jesus gives three super important r- r- reminders that I feel are really important for us to remember at, as we're walking into this crazy season that, that we are currently in. And Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says this. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even until the very end of the Age. Jesus gives three things here to, to, to his disciples. Reminders, you could say, that I feel are pertinent for you and for I within this crazy season. Right now, the first thing, though, is, 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 is really, it's super important to put yourself within the position of the disciples. Right? They just saw Jesus, right? They followed him for three, for three years. They saw him do incredible things, teaching incredible things, but then he gets arrested, and then, and then these disciples actually see him get crucified and die on the cross. He's dead. They see that, and then they see the same guy that was dead rise from the dead and stand before them. Think about that. Think, think about the complexity of that situation. You've got your self-doubts going on. You've got like, okay, this guy was dead, but now he's standing here. And then he comes and stands before you and essentially tells you three things. All authority is mine. You've got a job. And and the thing is, I will always be with you. And these are three, three things within the insanity of what's going on. You need to be reminded of today. First, Jesus said this, all authority on earth has been given to me. Why? Jesus rose from the dead, <laughs> right? Why does Jesus claim he, that he's got all authority? Because Jesus beat death. Jesus beat death. Here's, here's, a, here's the thing, right? Dead guy beats death. He's got authority, right? 
and, and what God the Father actually said about Jesus, he said this, the authority that the Father has, I, I give to my son. Why? Because he beat death. Here's the, here's the thing, right? The, the, the truly one thing that makes Christianity different from, from, from every other religion or kind of or kind of like teaching is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus came, he lived, he died, and, res- and resurrected sets him and sets Christianity apart from every other religion. And the truth is this, right? I love what Paul says. The resurrection is so central to Christianity that Paul, whenever he was writing to the church in Rome, essentially said this. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, Christianity is worthless. That there is that there is absolutely nothing distinct. Paul said this, if the dead are not raised, let us just eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. What, what he was saying is just like, if Jesus did not rise, YOLO, it doesn't matter, we're still dead within our sin. But Jesus beat death, and because Jesus beat death, he gives you and I, the opportunity to beat death as well as we put our faith and trust in what Jesus did on the cross with for, uh, f- on the cross in our place and for our sin, and we ultimately put our faith and trust in his resurrection. But here's the thing, it's his resurrection that gives him the authority over all things, right? It's his resurrection that ultimately gives him authority, right? Jesus, uh, here's the thing, right? The, the resurrection is the stamp of approval that all Jesus did and said were true. Essentially, the check was cashed. And here's the thing, as a Christian, one of the first things that I told you whenever this, this whole pandemic started was, is this, God is in control. He, he is in authority. But I said it this way, God is sovereign, right? And one of the things, Charles Spurgeon, uh, 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 a, a great pastor and theologian said, about God's sovereignty, he said the sovereignty of God is the pillow upon which the child of God rests his head at night, giving him perfect peace. And here's the thing, as a follower of Jesus Christ, you can can have peace right now knowing that this pandemic did not surprise God. What's going on now did not surprise him. All authority has been given to Jesus, and therefore we can have a peace knowing this does, this does not surprise him. He's not sitting, sitting up there preparing for the 2020 football season, prepared to curse Tom Brady. I'm just kidding. We love you, Tom. But at the same time, like, you know what? This is, this is not surprising him. So let me challenge you, Christians, don't freak out because God isn't freaking out, right? All authority has been given to him. Put your faith and trust in him. But then Jesus transitions. He says, he says this, all authority has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples. He tells them, look, I'm in authority, and now you've got a job. You are to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says this, look, you've got a job to do. And during this time here, one of the things that, that, that has grieved me about Christians is I feel like we've almost lost what our true calling and purpose is as followers of of Jesus Christ, and that is to go, right? And whenever you say go, what, you know, what, what, what does that, what does that, what does that ultimately mean? Go is simply this, you have been sent, right? So many people within their, their life think that they have been sentenced to their, to their life, when truly what they have been is sent. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your life is not just a death sentence. It's not just like whatever, whenever, however, willy-nilly. You have been sent by God to share and show his love, right? And Jesus reminds his followers of this. He was just like, look, it's authority that I've got. Now I'm telling you to go. And typically, right, the thing is whenever Christians think about going, they, they think, okay, you know what, Africa, I've got to go there and, and spread the gospel to some sort of, of like crazy tribe that doesn't know English. And really what you can lose is the fact of the first place that God has called you to go to is actually your home. 
It's actually those closest to you, right? Going is not simply going to some foreign country and telling other people about Christ. It begins in your home. It begins with those closest to you. Let me say it this way. Go begins at home. Go begins at home, right? The thing about this, right, since, since, since we've shut down our weekly services, we haven't been able to obviously provide children's ministry, right? Granted, we have been providing children's resources online. Hopefully you're taking advantage of those and using those. But, but within the warehouse, we have been trying to do children's, children's ministry on Sundays in our home, which has been like a WWE match mixed, mixed with just complete ins- ins- insanity, right? We're putting, on vid- we're putting on videos for them and we're trying to like, you know, show them the Bible lesson for, for the day and try to train them and disciple them. But the truth is this, it has been in insanity, but, but parents, listen to me. You've got to know that although we haven't been able to provide children's ministry, you've got to know this. Hopefully it has provided you the, the opportunity for you to see that you are the greatest spiritual influence on your child. The church is great. It's awesome. But at the same time, your greatest responsibility as, as, as a parent, if you are a Christ follower, is to influence your son or your daughter to be followers of Jesus Christ. That is your responsibility. And honestly, what I have found in this time is, man, like, do you know what the church typically gets kids for maybe, for maybe, you know, 90 minutes weekly, but at the same time, parents, you've got hours per week to, to spend with your kid. Now, the truth is, is this, right? Some of you might say, you know what? I'm not qualified. I don't know the Bible. I don't you know, I don't know what to say, teach, utilize resources, but also too, let me give you one thing, parents, that you can do that will make a big influence on your child. Ready? And that's just pray for them. Any moment, any opportunity you can get, before bed, before school, just take the opportunity to pray over them. To, to pray over them. And here's the thing, right? You might say, John, I have no idea what to pray. I can't even pray I can't even pray myself. The truth is this, right? God isn't looking for perfection. He's trying to find those who are available and willing. And really one of the greatest things you can offer your kids is just your willingness to pray over them, right? Here's the thing, right? I've prayed so much over my kids, and honestly, I'm not saying this because I'm great. I am saying this because it's been God's grace. But the thing is, my kids will not go to sleep unless I pray over them. And I'm just praying whatever comes to my mind. I'll just follow this. It's like, God, I pray you bless their mind. I pray that they would be creative. Bless their ears, Lord. Let them be able to, to discern what is, what is truth and what is false. I pray over their mouths, God, that they would speak words of life and beauty and truth. I pray over their eyes, God, that they would see what, what you see and see people the way that you see them. I pray over their heart, God, that you would give them a sensitivity to the spirit of God and presence of God within their lives. I pray over their feet, God, that you would guide them and, and lead them. I just simply followed their, their body parts. And just like, God, I just pray you would bless them, you know. And here's the thing, right? As you're teaching your kids how to pray and they're hearing you pray, you're growing within your prayer life, but you're also teaching your kids how to pray, what to actually pray for. Parents, look, just do something, right? Don't disqualify yourself because you say, I'm not a pastor, I'm not this, I'm, I'm not that. God, just do something, right? Don't disqualify yourself because here's the Here's the thing, Jesus doesn't disqualify you. And y'all, look, you've got, what, you've, you've got what it takes. Step out, utilize the resources that Lifehouse Kids provides. Step out and be the spiritual influencer in your kid's life that God has called you to be. Do not neglect that. Don't put that off. Take responsibility for that. But also, too, Jesus' command to go, we always think it's going to, it's going to interrupt our schedule when, honestly, I believe Jesus wants us to integrate it into our schedule, right? If you go to the gym, you can influence people there. If you go, you know, if you go sports teams, if you go in rest, restaurants, PTA, whatever the flow of your life is as a follower of Jesus Christ, you haven't been sentenced there, you have been sent there. You can use your job as the opportunity to influence people, to obey Jesus' command, to go, 
right? A, cu- a couple shout outs. Kim Buzek, she cuts my hair. Right? One of the things, talk, 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 you know, talking with her that I absolutely love is whenever she tells me about the people that come and sit in and sit in her chair and getting their kind of like hair done, hair, hair did, right? And she says, I've got the opportunity every day to influence people for Christ because they're sitting there while I'm doing their their hair. That's what I'm talking about. That, that, that's what I'm talking about going to where you are already going and viewing that as do you know what? Not that I'm sentenced to this life, but I have been sent in this life. I've been sent with this job. I've been sent to this city. I have been sent to do exactly what Jesus said, and that is go and make disciples. My friend Kerry was telling me the other day, he walked into the gym, you know, Kerry's all loud and boisterous, but he said there was this other lady uh, that works at the gym there. She was, she was crying, and she, and she knew Carrie works at the church and stuff like that, Call, called him over. They had a conversation right there within the, the gym office, and, and right there he prayed over her, right? And I mean, here's, here's the thing, guys. We always expect stuff to be done in church, but what you see in Jesus' ministry is that Jesus did, did ministry in the integration of his normal life. And that's what I'm, I'm saying. Going does not mean going to a foreign country. Going could be going to your, to your neighbor's house. It could be going to your, to your own children. I think we've got to really redefine what Jesus' command was. And that is to start with our, with, with our home. Outwork it into our surrounding uh, um, sphere of, of, of influence. And work it into our normalized lives and and integrate it so we can see Jesus glor- glorified. We can see this, right? But then, but then, too, I think it's important we truly define what Jesus called us to actually make. He called us to make disciples, right? And we live in a very interesting time in the United States where, man, like, there, there is a true, I don't know, what's, what's, what's the word here? A, uh, a true challenge with this. Because the thing is this, right? Within our country, we are trained to be consumers. We are trained to be people that it is all about us. I mean, just think about it. You've got billions of dollars of marketing and information being put into your habits, trying to find out what your habits are so you will consume more and give companies, entertainment, your time, attention, and dollars. And what, and what the culture is actually training us to do is, is to be consumers. And unfortunately, this has worked its way into the church. Where the thing is this, right? Because we consume Jesus, we, we consume some of what church, church offers. We can then actually think that we are disciples of Jesus, right? And what is a disciple, right? A disciple is somebody who is who, is intentionally being shaped and formed into the image of somebody or something. And that key word there is intentional. It is somebody that, that, that is intentionally saying, I want to be shaped or formed into the image of somebody or something. And so really the challenge here is really saying, you know, are you, are you, you know, are you a consumer of Jesus that is consuming some things from church? Or are you truly a, a follower, someone that's the, the does as Jesus said, I want to deny myself and lay my life down and follow him wherever that would go? Right? Are you, are, are you a consumer or follower? Because let me tell you this, guys. Jesus did not come to just create fans of him. Jesus did not come just to create people who, who were intrigued by his teachings and view him as being a good moral teacher. Jesus, Jesus came to actually create little hymns. And H-I-M-S, right? He came to create little Christ, right? And, and, and that's what the church is for. C.S. Lewis said this. He said, um, the church exists f- for nothing else but to draw men into Christ, to make them little Christ. If they are not doing that, all the cathedrals, clergy, missions, sermons, even the Bible itself are simply a waste of time. Neil Cole said this, he said this, 
Ultimately, each church will be evaluated by only one thing, its disciples. Your church is only as good as its disciples. It does not matter how good your praise, preaching, programs, or property are. If your disciples are passive, needy, consumerist, and not moving in the direction of radical obedience, your church is not very good. It's very sobering words, isn't it? Whenever we truly think, not, you know, not just individually, but corporately, what, what kind of Christ followers are, are, are we producing? Would you, would you be defined as kind of just like passive, needy, and, consume, and consumeristic? Or would you see yourself as going in the direction of radical obedience and following Jesus? Um, I, I heard a pastor say the other day, he said this here, he said that, that, Christian, or that we live in a time where Christianity is being dumbed down to, to get this right, moral therapeutic deism. Moral therapeutic deism. Deism. He said that as he examines culture and the culture of Christianity and churches, that Christianity and Jesus has been dumbed down within this culture to, to essentially be moral, therapeutic deism. Moral, essentially meaning this, that all Jesus wants to do is, is make you a good person, right? He just wants to take you from being bad to being good. Therapeutic, and as Jesus wants to just make you happy, he's like this big cosmic back rub. Whenever you have tension, you just cry out to him. as like, give me a little bit, Jesus, and I start to feel better. Deism is just that like God doesn't want a relationship with you. He's kind of far off in nature and things like that. And if you know anything about Jesus, that is nothing like Jesus. Jesus does not want to come just to make you a bad person into a good person. I say this all the time, right? He wants to take you from being a dead person spiritually to being what? Alive. A relationship with God where, where, where you were once dead in your sin, but now you are alive to you, Christ, right? Jesus does, just doesn't want to be thera- therapeutic and, and just like, okay, you feel bad. Let me make you feel better. No, he wants to toughen you up and give you endurance so you can face all, the, all that life has. And he provides a safe place, a restful place in the midst of the chaos that we are in. Why? So you can make a difference within the chaos. Deism. God, Jesus does, uh, just doesn't want to be a name to you. He wants to have a relationship with with you but the thing is right within this culture we fight moral therapeutic deism and the way that that we fight that what we're called to do is to be disciples that make disciples that intentionally say we want to be shaped and formed into the image of Jesus in the way we think act and use everything that God gave us instead of saying we just want to consume and just here's the thing right add a little bit of Jesus to our lives a disciple is someone that turns and intentionally says I'm putting everything in my time talent treasure I'm putting it all in and saying Jesus I need you to help me rethink everything according to what your standard and calling is and Jesus promise is this I came to give you life and life more uh, abundantly right Jesus does not want fans He wants followers. But the thing is this, we reproduce who we are. You don't reproduce what you hope for. You reproduce who you are. And the question is this, are you a fan of Jesus? Are you intrigued by him? Or could you really define yourself as being, I am someone that is intentionally wanting to be shaped and formed into the image of Christ. Jesus said this, right? He said, I've got authority. I rose from the dead. I'm in charge, I'm sovereign, just calm down. But then he said, you got a job. He says, you're called to go and make disciples. But then he said this. He said, lastly, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He, here's the thing, right? Jesus was, he was about to leave. And the disciples, they were probably thinking what we would think. Like, man, if Jesus is gone, how are we going to do anything? Like, how are we going to, like, Jesus was here. He taught us and trained us. Now Jesus is leaving. Like, what the heck, what the heck, uh, well, what the heck are we going to do? But Jesus said, even though I won't be physically with you, I will be with you. How? We talked about this last week through the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus actually said 
to his, to his disciples. He said, don't go out and do any ministry until you are equipped with power from on high, filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus knew the task of going out and doing this job was, was pointless if we had only human effort and human strength. He said, don't, or Jesus said this, wait for the gift that I will give and send you. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, God is with us. And that's what Jesus was wanting to remind his disciples of, his followers of. And I believe today you need to be re reminded of because right now so many of you feel alone by yourself you've been quarantined we've we've been spiritually distant as a church family we've been joining together online we've been doing groups online and that's why look if you can get out on september 20th come out hang out and see people's faces worship live with us it's going to be just a a grand time of us seeing seeing each other and doing what scripture says being encouraged by each other's presence but the thing is, this right, he's, he says, <laughs> he says, surely I am with you always till the very end. Here's the thing, right? How do you know that God's presence is with you, that Jesus is with you? The first thing is, like I said, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. And like last week, we said this, the Holy Spirit goes where the Holy Spirit's welcome. And the Holy Spirit wants to fill fill you but but secondly you know here's the thing right you you can feel the power and presence and know that god is with you through his people right i've got friends that i can just look at and see i know that because they're they're with me the god in them is also with me right and that's the power of having friends and co-laborers in the faith and having people you know that are like-minded and that have the same goal with, with you. There, there, there is power in having people with you. Why? Because you can see the, pre- the power and presence of God through those people with you. I can also know that God is with me through, through, through lives that, that I see changed, right? As a church, we're celebrating three years as a church on, on September 20th. And that's why too, if you come out on September 20th, we're gonna celebrate our third birthday. We're gonna give you a free shirt. And we're going to celebrate all that God has done in three years. But I can look at the people that have come to our church in these past three years, and I can literally see God in the way that God has changed their life. Robert Rakowskis, right? He's someone that we always talk about. Why? Because he is a physical expression that God is real. He is a physical expression that the power of God is real. Seeing the the first time that he came to our church, the second week we were a church and what God is doing in him and through him, now we can see the power of God. I think of someone like Stacy Moyer, Raquel Robinson, Geraldo and Tyra Tucker. Like I, I, can, I, I can see the power and presence of God through lives being changed, right? The power is this, that, that his promise is that he will never leave us or forsake us. And some, and some of you today need that in your soul because the devil, what the devil does to get at you, he isolates you. He, he, like, honestly, that's what you see. He attacked Jesus when he was by himself. And the same way he attacks Jesus, he'll attack you, right? And so the first thing Jesus, all, or the first thing that Satan always tries to do whenever he's trying to get you into his plan, get you into his purpose is to do what? isolates you because then it's only you versus him and he's got you. But here's the thing, right? When you know that God is with you, he's for you. We can say what David said in Psalm 139. Let me turn there really, really, really quick. We're going to actually end here. Psalm 139 verses 7 through 12. This is what David said about God's presence with us. He said this, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If, if I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide from me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. I speak that over you, that you would be reminded today 
that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, right? Do you see the reminders today and why these scriptures are so important? And see the progression here. (laughs) Jesus said, I'm in charge. I've got authority. Secondly, you got a calling. You got a job. Go. And thirdly, know I'm with you as you go. Church, in the middle of this insanity, which this has been absolute insanity. This has been the hardest season on churches all across the United States. In the middle of this insanity, I want to reinstall purpose today. I want you to be reminded today of what you are called to be, of of who you are called to represent, and that you have been sent today and that you are not by yourself, that as the church of Jesus Christ, we are called to share and show God's love to people who are far off. I believe today, like I said, that God wants to reinstall purpose today, that possibly you have forgotten it individually, but also to your corporate call as being a part of the church, that we are not called to get into just political squabbles, right? The thing is, right, we're not called to get into debates about stuff that in the light of eternity does, do, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. We serve a God that has full authority, has given us a job, and has called us to go and says, as you go, I will be with you. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. God, I pray for each person watching right, right now. God, I pray that you would reinstill purpose into them. The God, the, the God, with everything going on, it has been so easy for us to miss and, and, and to become disaligned with what our calling and purpose is as Christ followers. And just as Jesus had to remind his followers, I believe today you're, that, you are, that you are reminding your people that God, you have all power. You've given them a calling and a purpose. And God, you are with them. And God, today as we conclude this series, God, as we've talked about the fact that you have not given us a spirit of fear, that we're not called to be um, earthly focused, earthly minded, but heavenly minded and, and heavenly focused. And the fact that you've given us your spirit to be with us, that you've promised us peace, God. All of these scriptures for this season that we've had, I pray that they would be food for our souls as we uh, progress forward as we go forward that you would be God intimately connected with us and remind us who you are what you've done and what our and what our ultimate future is in Jesus name right now um, if that's you you would just say John I need to be reminded today of what my purpose is <laughs> just be like you you've gone off track you, you've just like gotten swept away by a bunch of just like d- different stuff. And today you say, John, I need to be realigned with my calling individually and corporately as a follower of Jesus Christ right now. Would you just write in the comment section? Yes, me, whatever, whatever you, you want to put and just acknowledge uh, the fact of today you need to be repositioned, refocused on who God wants you to be and what God's called you to do. But also, too, today, you might uh, declare yourself or see yourself as what I spoke about earlier. You might see yourself as I spoke on this. You might say, John, I really don't know if, if I am an actual follower of Jesus Christ. Maybe you would say, do you know what? As I examine things, I am definitely more of a consumer. I've just consumed aspects and parts of Jesus, but I have not actually made a conscious decision to be intentionally formed and shaped to be like Christ. You, you, you've, you've been a consumer, you haven't been a follower. And today you would say, hey John, do you know what? I wanna make a decision to actually draw a line in the sand and step over that line and say, I wanna be a follower of Jesus Christ. And the great thing about it is, it is, is really what it requires and takes to cross that, to cross that line is simply faith, right? The truth is this, right? Faith is what takes us from being an enemy of God to a friend of God. Why? Because what you're simply doing whenever you start to follow Jesus is you're putting your faith and trust in what Jesus has already done for you. 
right? We can sometimes think we gotta earn it. We can sometimes think that we gotta like buy our salvation or buy our faith. No, you simply put your faith and trust in what Jesus did in your place and for your sin and trust the fact that he rose from, from the dead and the benefits that Jesus had, right? The Jesus gained, he beat death. He gives you those same benefits when you put your faith and trust in him. And that's why scripture calls you being saved by, by grace through faith. By grace meaning you can't earn it, you simply receive it, and by faith simply saying you put your trust in what Jesus did. And today, if that defines you and you want to start your journey of following Christ, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you that opportunity. And, and really the way we do it at our church is we just have you say yes. And that's, and that's what I'm going to have you do right now. If that is you, you want to make a decision to follow Christ, would you just say yes right now? Wherever you are, you can say it loud, softly, in your heart, whatever. Just say yes. Just say yes. Now, if you said yes today, I want to simply lead you in a quick in, in, in a quick prayer. And basically, all I want to do is take your hand and put it in Jesus' hand. If you said yes today, would you pray this prayer after me? Jesus, today I give you my life. I receive what you did on the cross in my place and for my sin. Thank you for doing what I could not do and giving me what I do not earn. Thank you that today I have new life in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we want to say welcome to the family, but also too, we're going to simply ask you to, to take one more step. Would, would you just right now in the comment section, just type me, or you can actually text in 757 690 240 one and simply text me and that will let us and and that will let us know that you said yes to Christ today and 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 we want to simply follow follow up with you and and give you a few steps in this brand new journey of following Christ cuz we cuz we want to walk with you and help you fulfill the decision you you made today which is to be a follower of Jesus Christ but we're going to take some time right now and respond to God's word right we believe that whenever God's word comes forth that then, that then we need to set aside time to respond. And that's, and that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna sing one more song. If you wouldn't sign off yet, would you just engage this moment and actually say, Jesus, if there is any unclean way within me, show me. If there's anything that I need to repent of, take some time and repent of, of it. If there's something today that you need to give to God, this is your time to give it to him. Let's respond to God's word today in song and singing.
Lifehouse family, we're gonna uh, we're gonna pray and close out today. Before we actually pray, though, just a quick reminder for you: Lifehouse Live, September 20th. We're celebrating our third birthday. We we want you there to RSVP your spot. Text Live to 757-690-2401 to come out and celebrate. We all promise you're you're gonna be safe. Uh, we're gonna be socially distanced, and I mean, here's the thing: right? we're gonna create a safe atmosphere for you to come, or for you and your family to come and worship with us. Secondly, too, if you want to jump on a Zoom call right, 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 right after this is, is done, if you have questions about the sermon or if you are a first or second or third time guest joining us online today, we would love to say hi, right? So right now in your comment section, in your chat section, in your chat section you will see a Zoom link. If you just want to click on that Zoom link, somebody will be there to greet you and welcome you, and we would love to say hi to you. But would you lift up hands? We're going to pray. And we're going to thank God uh, for all that he spoke to us today. Heavenly Father, thank you for entrusting us with the greatest message anybody has ever heard. The good news, the gospel, that Jesus has beat death and offers us his victory. I pray that we would be reminded today that you are in authority. That there is nothing that happens that you don't have power over. And because you are in authority, you've given us a task, a job, a calling, a purpose, and honor to go to our families, our jobs, to go to our communities, our social environments, and share and show who you are. And I pray that we would realize today that we are sent, not sentenced. And because of that, we can find purpose in any situation. Thank you that you are with us. You'll never leave us or forsake us. And there is nowhere we go that you aren't there. And because of that, fear must bow. Anxiety cannot stand. Doubt cannot flourish. And because you are, and that's because you are with us. And I pray your presence would go with your people this week. And we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lifehouse fam, we love you. We're praying for you. If there is anything we can do for you, reach out to us. We'll see you next Sunday. Lifehouse, one thing we say around here all the time is don't do life alone. And in the day and age of social distancing, living life alone can be easier than ever. That's why we believe our life groups are crucial to your personal and spiritual growth during this time. With over 10 in-person and online groups, there's bound to be something for every age, schedule, and stage of life. Groups like 
men and women's groups, Whole Health, a fitness group with various instructors and training methods, Fresh Start, a group for new believers, Financial Peace, a group to help you achieve a debt-free living, The Road Back to You, which is a group using the Enneagram to understand yourself and others better, Election 2020 is a timely group using the Word of God as a guide to show how we should engage in politics. It all starts the week of September 28th. Sign up today by texting LG to the number on your screen, or as always, go to LifehouseNN.com. Thank you again for joining us online today. We hope you are encouraged and inspired to take the next step on your faith journey. And on behalf of our church, we wanna say that we're praying for you and your family as you navigate this crazy and unprecedented time that we're living in. And our desire at LifeHouse is to help you in any way that we can during this time through prayer, practical help, connecting with people in the community and making sure that they get help as well. If there's any way that we can help, please reach out. During this time more than ever, you need hope and you need encouragement. And that's what our online services are here for. You need to be connected into a church family. And although at this time we can't invite you to join us at a physical location, we can invite you to join us online every Sunday at 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m. or 4.30 p.m. right here at lighthousenn.online.church. In the meantime, you can keep in touch with us through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and lifehousenn.com. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you next Sunday.